hot. It's hot. Hot in the city. Right now, the city's hot. Hot, hot. I don't even know if this is relevant, but we're just coming off a whole slew of things the past weekend, Canada Day weekend. Canada Day weekend for And then uh, Gay Pride. Definitely Pride. Gay yeah. Pride was a scene in Toronto, like always, because uh, it's a big baby. baby. We're babies, man. We're okay, babies. did you get any Pride up? No, nah, man. Uh, it was the best party in the city. <laughs> oh, trust me. I know, yeah. Normally, I go to Pride every year, but this year, I missed it. Uh, the, the party on Friday night, kind of. <laughs> I'm getting older, man. So <laughs> the body doesn't hold up like it used to. You no. did a literal yeah. Canada Day celebration. It took the whole weekend to wear it out. Yeah, pretty much, man. That's what happens when you start getting old. <laughs> you don't bounce back like you used to. <laughs> Things start sagging. Holy shit. <laughs> As they say, the heart of the fall. Uh, I'm telling you. So, man, this is going to be part two. Of the Kenny Bryan experience, we're gonna call this. Welcome, Kenny. It was, welcome, uh, welcome back. Uh, thank you. And for further, I like that further do shit because I'm gonna use it. <laughs> I like it. Rogan killed it. Yeah, but I still like it. But well, tell him, let's ask this: What do you have right off the top that you want to plug? Website, Twitter, all of that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, as usual, just my website, KenBryan.net. K-E-N-B-R-Y-A-N.net. You can find everything with me there, from events to blogs, or anything that I'm up to. I plug all my social media in, in it, KenBryan.net. And you like, do you have a Twitter handle off the hand? Or? At Ken Bryan. What? Yeah. It's all low. It's all yeah, low. Exactly. Y-A-N. Day two, it went live. He's on there. Oh, get man. This bitch. Pretty much, man. Just like uh, my, Not Ken my Brian Gmail. Not Ken Bryan 1 7. Yeah, even like I've had Gmail since it was um, like it was an invite only. So, yeah, okay. so my Gmail is Ken Bryan at Gmail. Everyone's like, how'd you get that? I'm I got like, Ymail as well. Oh, no way. I got both. I got both and Hotmail. <laughs> yeah, Actually, right. someone came up to me at a party when we were doing, back in the 90s when we were doing yeah. parties, yeah. and came up and was like, here, I got dose at Hotmail for you. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. at the time, I was yeah. like, uh, Steve at Interlog. Or yeah. Steve Mealing yeah. at Interlog yeah. or dose. I can't remember yeah. off the top of my head. I was yeah. like, wicked. I, what the fuck am I going to do with yeah. this? Yeah. 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 Put it in my pocket. Totally forgot about it. Yeah, next thing you know. <laughs> Years later, I'm like, fuck, someone's registered this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember what anyone was saying then. Yeah. So, man, we want to start off talking about, what, celebrity worship? Yes, sir. Well, being well, in the well, nightlife industry, yeah, kind of like everything in its mother, it's kind of everything's turned upside down. Where it used to be, we used to laugh at Britain for having this incredible paparazzi yeah. problem, yeah, and everybody like you know hanging off of wh- whoever, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like last words what they're wearing, like, yeah. you know, underwear shots, whatnot. And then yeah. we kind of got invaded with that, yeah. inundated completely, yeah, throughout the early mid two thousands. And here we are now, where you've got some. Yeah. Uh, C D and this is not migrating, just what it's <laughs> called. Uh, actresses and actors showing up. Yeah. Oh. We've had a panty shot or a nip slip yep. and they're hosting club events for yep. thousands of dollars. Yep, yep. So yeah, what's your I, thoughts I mean, on that? Like yeah. being in the industry in Toronto and what it's come down to is mm-hmm. It's here. Yeah, I mean and it goes beyond that too. Like you could just have girls that have a lot of followers on Instagram and they they become social celebrities. Yeah, that's right? kind of and, what it's evolved to for and, sure. You know, they get like a ton of money to come out. So I mean, I think people, <laughs> people, <ridiculous>. yeah, <laughs> a ton people, of money. Hey, people come out though, man. Right. I I I think um, when I was running uh, uh, marketing for this one club, I don't know if I'm allowed to mention names or not on the podcast, but yeah, you can mention or, anything you want. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. yeah when I was doing, player. yeah, when when uh, I was running the marketing for EFS. Um, we brought in, I don't remember her name, man. She was like a sports girl. girl. Tits? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah that yeah, narrows it down. <laughs> I think it's sports and tits. No, no, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I think it's yeah. that. You know what I'm talking she about? Has, like, she, does, she does like the salami nipple things. Like she'll do a topless sports broadcast and she'll just have like literally like salami or something covering her nipples. But she's super hot. She really knows the stuff she does. And we were slammed when we booked her. And then we also booked um, a good buddy of mine, actually. He's from Toronto. His name's Nick Bateman. Shout out, Nick. Really great guy. He's like 6'4", gorgeous, good-looking model dude. He has like a 2 million followers on Instagram. From Toronto. Yeah, he's from Toronto. And we, and, we, and we booked him at EFS one night. And we literally had about 700 women come out. I don't know. It was wow. crazy. Yeah. And <laughs> this is like middle of winter, which is normally like, you know, yeah, one yeah. of the slowest parts of the industry. But... They came out for him, boy. So, Full I mean, force. yeah, I think people are just hardwired, naturally hardwired to look up to things. And whether it's, you know, religion or in the UK, it's, um, you know, they have the whole royal thing. We don't have royals in North America, so we've turned our celebrities into royals. And we want to know what, 
you know, so and so's cooking, or like yeah, I read the Daily Mail every day, and yep. some of the most ridiculous shit, <laughs> right? So and so wasn't wearing a bra today, and it's like front page news. Yeah. Like, why does a that camera even flash? You know, all of a sudden, there's yeah. Like, oh, wow. Yeah, man. So, yeah, and uh, I mean, uh, as far for clubs, at the end of the day, it's all about asses and seats, right? So, mm, yeah, yeah. As long as the people are relevant, and people be willing to willing to come out and see them, so you book them. You know what I mean. And they're not just yeah. dumb fit. They're not mm -hmm. just dumb broads or dumb dudes. They're actually no. women and men who are mm -hmm. quite savvy. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, man. They kind of invented. They invented the yeah. whole field themselves, yeah. and now they're yeah, absolutely cashing in completely. Absolutely, and a lot of people just want to be close to them. Like I've booked stuff with so far. One of the biggest events I ever did was with the, some guys from The Young and the Restless, and. These weren't even like the main dudes, like you know, um, you know, uh, Victor Newman or anything like that. Like I wasn't even really sure who, who you know, these guys were. But there was two good-looking dudes. One was like the bad boy, and the other one was like the really nice guy. And I booked them at my old club, the Roosevelt Room, and I had eleven hundred people show up. And when I say eleven hundred people, like it was women. Like, you know what I mean? Like women, like not not like coogs. Like you know, there were some of them there or whatever. But women, it was one of the best crowds I've ever seen in Toronto, and they came out because it was also during film festival. So it was all it was it was the Young and the Restless party during film festival. Yeah. So it kind of had that built into it. But people came out for them, man. People come out for them. So as a, as a venue, as long as the, the the dollars make sense, you're gonna book them. You know. So kind of over the years, you've seen in the club well, we've been around a while between the three of us you can mm -hmm. see the entertainment industry in its own right in toronto oh yeah kind of shift from the whole downtown culture of everything being in the I'm club sorry. district mm -hmm. it's and <laughs> that's okay yeah it's not one thing up. to open the door and say so you're going to come back <laughs> tell her anyway what i was kind of getting at is that when everything moved into the downtown area as far as clubs were concerned <clears throat> people were excited and yeah. they came out to the club yeah. because it was actually a club yep yeah downtown yep. in in this new it, area yeah. called the entertainment district yeah. and yeah. then you saw that kind of like wear thin and then there was like a beginning of like a dj mm -hmm. culture kind of thing happening yeah. in toronto yeah. yeah so clubs were depending on what dj was coming into town yeah and then it became uh what promoter was promoting the club yeah outside promoter because everything used to be in-house mm -hmm. and then it went from that to just straight up corporate sponsorship buying the biggest djs going yeah and then just stuff me into clubs it didn't yeah. matter if you're going to break even or not yeah at the door because everything was a corporate yeah. sponsor thing yeah and then there's a bit of a lull mm -hmm. and then the resurgence in toronto so mm -hmm. do you see kind of like what's happening with this culture the mm -hmm. new club culture mm -hmm. you know what i mean not based on one element mm -hmm. but it's kind of based on all the elements yeah and it's back to almost like extracting all that it's more of an experience thing you're selling again yeah uh, ultimately that's what you know like me personally that's what i've always tried to focus on is you know providing experience for people um the, the change in the industry i mean i think the entertainment in uh, the entertainment district within itself was an attraction because even if you didn't know where you were going it's just destination you, yeah you mm -hmm. knew you were going down there and there was going to be all kinds of it was like going to the fucking <coughs> circus man like, it's like 15 there's, bars yeah, in one yeah, yeah, yeah there's yeah. like hundreds even if you're not going inside anywhere there's just chicks up out. and down the street yeah. there's food there's people in their cars it was just an experience in and of itself the um the breaking up of the entertainment district you know that that provided a bit of its own challenges um well, you and kind it, of went from yeah. like larger clubs. Yeah, I mean, to, larger to, to as the in smaller ones. Yeah, capacity. Yeah. So you could oh, do yeah. like a more elaborate productions yeah. Yeah. and things happening. And then yeah. when they started to break that up yeah. for the condos or whatever yep. it was that was coming in, just yep. money, let's say. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. was, yeah. So now all of a sudden you've got yeah. a venue holding 600 people being a larger venue. Yeah, <laughs> actually, though, back in the day it was like 1,200. Yeah. Right? And like yeah. some <laughs> spots, like when we had Turbo, yep. Yep. we were doing 2,000 yep. people legally. Yep. You guys in 2,000, bro? Yeah. We had upstairs and downstairs, oh, sorry, right? yeah. and the yeah. government yeah. same yeah. with like they're oh, yeah. yeah. four or five thousand. I, I mean, yeah. the, the, throughout the, the night, Gov's, yeah, the, the Gov's new spot is opening. Well, Sound Academy, yeah. the docks, yeah, it's but the Gov yeah. being closed left this huge a mass, hole, a massive hole, uh, and it's just actually yeah. built up yeah. a lot in and these. So now it's kind of like I yeah. guess a New York thing. We've got mm -hmm. neighborhoods, yeah, actually yeah. having their own little yeah. hipster thing happening yeah. or. Yep. Hip hop thing in this area, you know what I mean? It's yeah, yeah. The, I mean, and I think that's what the that's what the city wanted. They didn't want an entertainment district anymore. And I think people, I've never been there, but from what I've heard, that's what kind of like what Chicago's like, where 
all the nightlife spots are in different parts of town and it's kind of spread out um <coughs> you know th that's made that that's made for a bit more a different type of competition whereas before like even some of the more established people in the industry were just like we'd open up on a thursday and we'd be slammed you know and now you yeah. actually have to work for it you know and now mm -hmm. you Sorry. now now you have to invest wisely now you have to book smartly now you have to budget now you have to and i i, I think that one of the things that's missing from toronto is just a return to um, hospitality, man, especially in the industry. Maybe it's because I'm getting older myself, and I, I, I like you know my crowd ranges from people who are in their 40s to you know people around 21 to 23. So I have a quite a, a broad you know swath of people that I that I that I hit. And there's a difference in what you know a 23 year old who's going out on a Saturday night wants than a 35 year old who's out on a Thursday night. Naturally, right? Mm -hmm. um, but the one thing that the, 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 the main difference is that 35 year old, they've already been to 23 year old. They're not here for the bullshit. They don't want you telling them how to dress. They don't want is, you know, shut the fuck up and take my money. That's what people are about nowadays. And what you're actually finding is the from five o'clock till about 10, everywhere slammed. Yeah. And then after that, no one, like, say, other than a Friday or Saturday, if it's fucking ghost town in the city, you know? Because mm -hmm. those people go out now where it's just no hassles, you know? Yeah. You go somewhere, yeah. put my card down, and get it done, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, it's very hard to have people out on a Thursday night, you know, conversely, back when we had the district or even... It used to be a stronger Thursday. Oh, yeah. It was a carryover yeah. from the university. Exactly, exactly. It's not... Exactly. It's, you're still getting the university yep. educated crowds yep. down here, but on yep. a Thursday night, mm -hmm. they're picking their yep. places. And yep. Yep. It's, it's more of a... Yeah. What do you assume? Like a dining restaurant it's, yeah, experience? Yeah, it's more like... It's an after work. It's it's late. It's a bar scene. It's, you know, go Straight and, up and bar, socialize yeah. more. And I think that's one thing where... You know, certain things in the nightlife industry got taken taken away from it with things like you know bottle service or whatever, where or even you know uh, the pay to party scene that popped up, where these things. It's one thing to be superficial, but to me, those things were artificial. And yeah, and, yeah. and 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 the one thing people are looking for now is is um, authenticity. And you're getting that. And by authenticity, I mean people want to socialize. They want to go out and have a drink and talk and laugh and sure socialize. Yeah. 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 And, uh, you know, social, as much as we may have social media, people still want to uh, connect yeah. with well, that's people. That's kind of one of the questions I want to ask yeah. you is that yeah. you were talking about the different age groups. Yeah. The spectrum that you have. Yeah. An experience for, mm -hmm. for myself and Chad going out. Yeah. We're in our 40s now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Versus in our 30s. Yeah. Is there one, and then yeah. their early 20s, you yeah. know, mid to late 20s? Yep, yep. There's got to be something that's in common, common between everybody. But at the same time, the experience that yeah. you're going out, yeah. like, there's one consistency? <laughs> Fun. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's kind of what I'm looking yeah. for. Yeah. So mm -hmm. is it, like, the Good. experience, bring yep. it back to what you're saying, you're yep. bringing to the table, is in order to get out, like, uh, what we were talking about earlier, there's different bars in different pockets, yep. and they all serve different purposes, yep, right? absolutely. 20-something crowd goes here. Yep. 30 something crowd goes here and yep. it bleed over a little bit. Yep. The 40 something crowd, yep. it actually, there is a 40 something crowd that oh, goes absolutely out. Absolutely, there is. You know what I mean? Yeah, Say I just, 10, 10 yep. 15 years ago, you wouldn't yeah, be was saying, I'm thinking nope. about that. Yeah, yeah. Nope. Whether it's yep. Peter Pan syndrome or it's just no. how everybody's spending the their money. Yeah, yeah, man. Like, I just turned 40 last month. You know what I mean? Um, and I'm not the only person I know who's, you know, they're 40 and just like you're still trying to figure shit out. It's not like before where you graduate, you get married, have a, you know, cheat on your wife by 25 you've got three kids and a career that you're not going anywhere and things have changed just you don't have one job. you know no you, yeah. you don't have one job anymore you know, people aren't getting married as young anymore if at all mm -hmm. you know the people are making a lot more money so there's a lot more you know um opportunities to travel and to put off having kids and all those things that would normally quote unquote weigh you down or you know or a lot more student people, loans yeah student loans oh, it's just fuck, different yeah. anchors yeah so, still anchors just yeah different. yeah so i mean uh, i think that's that's why you're having, and you know, people are putting more attention on what they're eating and going out. And you know, a 45 year old now looks nothing like a 45 year old in the 70s or 80s. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, 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 you're it could be our perception gym. though, too. So, so the common thread, yeah, what I'm seeing between yeah. that you've managed to find, yeah. Is it's fun. fun. It's fun giving fun. people an experience. There fun is go. too broad. Giving people an experience. And, so and, the Kenny experience yeah. is what? Then it's kind of what I wanted to get at. And, oh, it's uh, very personable. It's uh, you know, <laughs> I'm a great host. I love connecting people and introducing people. And I think there's that. That's that's something that's missing a lot. Is 
when people go out, they're going out to connect. They're going out to meet each other. I've never had pay to party girls at my at my parties because mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, <coughs> sure, shit. we spoke about that yeah, last time. Right? Yeah. I couldn't even believe it. Yeah, like you know, I would rather you know pay a promoter to bring someone or get a girl yeah. to promote, right? Then pay uh, you know, a girl. Yeah, to so just show up. Look pretty. Who's going around to every different club? In case yeah, for those who don't know. Yeah, yeah. So pay to party is like when um, they'd hire hot girls just to come and stand around and make the club look good, you know. And then of course, like guys would spend money if if a group of guys had a table, they'll go over to the table and you know socialize that kind like, of shit it's kind of like weird, a strip man. club but with clothes on yeah and there's nothing like sexual or anything like that I'm no just, yeah i'm just saying and, and yeah. I'm just, i wasn't insinuating <laughs> yeah, yeah. For yeah, all those but, who do. yeah but i'm saying the mentality of yeah. behind that is like your hostess yeah in a strip yeah. club yeah would do something like that yeah absolutely in, you yeah know what I mean? yeah absolutely so i mean uh, and to me what that did is that took away the onus for the venue and the promoters and the hosts to actually be good hosts and to produce. actually yeah, yeah to produce and to actually practice hospitality now if before if you had like you know eight or nine super hot chicks that always rolled with a promoter or a host it's yeah. because they knew they were being well taken care of they knew that they wouldn't have any hassles to get in at the door they knew that they were getting what they were promised they knew that they had a decent relationship with the person not you take all that away because well now they're just getting paid they had part yeah. ownership yeah. essentially yeah it's like you know that's yeah. oh, that's the night i go to absolutely just like it's like that's my absolutely. jam you know absolutely. I mean? absolutely that's my jam every yep. every friday every thursday yep. this is where i'm at yep. if you're looking for me that's where yeah. you can find yep. me yep. Exactly. And it's just like they know exactly. who they can go to. Listen, my yep. cousin's in from out of town. Yep. I show yeah. them, you know how to make it yeah. right. Yeah. To the point where I guess you've got such a reputation now that yeah. you're you've extended beyond just the local local yeah. crew, and yeah. it's gotten to when celebrities yeah. come into town. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, you know, I'm lucky in that sense. Part of that's from my film festival business with all the um, events I produce during TIFF uh, for all the studios that come in and you know different production houses. But then it all it, it also goes to well. If a celeb's out and they need to be taken care of, they know that there's a trusted person, right? Like, it's been, I've had everyone. So, from, when we say taken care yeah. of, we don't mean like Ray Donovan. No. They got a dead hunter <laughs> in the tub and a pile of blood. No, no, no. Oh, okay, no, just to clarify. No, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> by, as fun as that might seem, sad, um, by taking care of it means to avoid those things, actually, because as much as, like, I'll give you an example during New Year's Eve, um, I had this uh, rock star dude and. Um, you know, we're having a great time. He was recently uh, separated from somebody, and you know, it was New Year's Eve. We ended. It was at a hotel. We ended up getting a suite, staying there, and you know, we had a bunch of girls that I knew and stuff, and maybe like one or two dudes that were stragglers. And you know, I made it really clear that you know, as much as this is New Year's Eve and it's fun and all this kind of shit, and you're hanging out with this big rock star. I go, anyone gets out of line, I'm telling everyone to get the fuck out because at the end of the day, it's on you. he's viable. You're yeah. viable. Well, You're yeah. Viable. Yeah. Both. Yeah. Like, you know, you'll have the silliest thing happen. And I go to you guys, oh, but we're partying, bro. Yeah. I go, but it, it happens with this guy and it ended up front page news, literally. Yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah. So it's really important. And it's going to cost him money. Oh, yeah. Big time. You know, and it could be anything. You know? So you can get blacklisted in a hurry. Yeah. 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 But more than that, I care, I care about them. Like as people, like I, I don't want to fuck someone shit up. Like forget the job stuff. Like y- you know, it's one thing if, if if you're like, all right, um, you know, I want to look cool because this girl or whatever. I want people to know I hang out with this particular person or whatever. It's not about that to me. At the end of the day, it's and a that's job. Business and it's too, a business. right? Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I want the next person that's yeah. coming into town to be it's like you. That guy's the person for you to go with. Like mm-hmm. you know, it was a, if, um, last year when you know we're filming this big movie here and. Um, we had like this one, uh, one of the you know hottest actresses in Hollywood and a really big supermodel and they'd go everywhere with us, you know what I mean? And that's because they trusted us and a b- bunch of the actors that were in the film would go everywhere with us because they knew that A, anyone that we brought to them, we'd make sure it's good people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. And you know, I have one of my best friends, this girl, she loves to party, total animal. And when I was hanging out with this one, you know, particular celeb last year, um, you know, <laughs> She met a friend of his, and some some stuff came out of her mouth, and I was just like, yeah, so you realize you're never going to meet him, right? And this is like one of my really good friends, and she's like, oh, come on, you know, I was just joking. I was like, yeah, no. Yeah, (laughs) it's it's just not the way how it works. Yeah, I go, as cool and as friendly as everything is, it's still a business, and that's caused me to clash with other people in the industry, people that used to work for me. But at the end of the day, it is a business and our job is to take care of people, whether they're a rock star, whether, you know, it's a guy just coming out for a night on the town, wants to hang out, meet some people. My job is to take care of people and take care and care of the 
rhythm actually means the repercussions from what we're doing the, the same night, you know? So we still have fun, yeah. but I make sure things don't go fucking So these are celebs and are people of, of mm -hmm. a common name mm -hmm. that are around and that are coming to town. You're hosting. Yeah. So on the flip side, when mm -hmm. you're promoting an event, that's mm -hmm. you as a host around town. It's yeah. part of the benefits of yeah. being a well-known promoter yeah. is that, you know, you can go anywhere. People take care of you. Yeah. If you've done it to them. <laughs> yeah. Theoretically. Yeah. Well, you know what? <laughs> yeah. I... I'm, I'm assuming there's no yeah. jealousy and that yeah. everybody, it's a give and take situation, right? Yeah. yeah. They know that they want that person in there. Absolutely. And they're going to take care of you. Oh, so what if, you're, so. what if you're promoting an event mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, and you're reaching out and you're, are you going the route of booking a celebrity or are you going to try and do something where you're going to generate your own vibe and they're just going to show up at your event? Um, and on yeah. top of that, mm -hmm. if you are booking a celebrity, mm -hmm. is there any corporate money in that? Yeah, yeah, there, there, there is corporate money depending. Um, I come from a sponsorship development background, so whenever we discussed I discussed that earlier, yeah, so that's yeah, what I thought this yeah. would be a bit more relevant to what's happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, for me personally, if if I'm booking, like I believe in putting together experiences, and I, I won't get a celeb if I don't need to have a celeb. Yeah. If I think that a celeb will be dope or, or fit in there, like last year I wanted to. Um, Clint Eastwood's son was in town. He was shooting a, a movie here. And um, really good looking dude, like he's a model, all this kind of shit. And I wanted to do um, a water charity event down at Cabana with another, um, with a, because at, at Cabana at the time we had Box Water as a sponsor. And I'm like, you know, it would have been perfect if we brought this guy in because he's, he's like a surfer dude and all that kind of shit. And chicks love him and he's fit. And I was like, it's a natural match. But, you know, there's a clash because he was also already signed to something else or whatever. They have other endorsement deals. But in my head, those are the types of events I put together. Something where I'm taking a celebrity that's known for this particular thing. Yeah. I'm taking an event like Cabana. Uh, that, building, that, building the experience yeah, around it. Building the experience sense. around it. So, you're not, yeah. so in one way, yeah. you're actually matching a corporate sponsorship. Yeah, exactly. With, and I mentioned there's yeah. a lot of bullshit behind the scenes. Where yeah. You've got to make... Oh, yeah. Both feel like they're getting the best deal of oh, the century. Absolutely. At the yeah. same time, you got to get paid. Absolutely. And more importantly, it's got to build yeah. the Kenny Brown. Yep. Yep. The brand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, absolutely. So, that makes sense. Yeah, so that's the way I approach things. It's, um, you know, during film festival, uh, you know, when I owned a supper club, we wanted to, you know, show people a brunch experience. So we reached out to Bagatelle in New York. And, yeah. you know, they're the ones that started the whole party brunch scene. And yeah. we had them come in and we did a whole, like, celebrity brunch two days during TIFF. And I had a bunch of people come. Oh, yeah, we, we, we flew everyone up. We The owners, um, yeah. all their serving staff, the their exec to chefs. Oh, yeah, man. We had their menu, everything. You know, we put it all together. Then we brought in, like, you know, Moe and Bacardi and all that kind of shit. Isn't that kind of where the whole uh, fire... Mm -hmm. Yeah, fireworks, spark, and, fireworks. Yeah, yeah. 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 In, the, in the bottles. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now everybody's doing every yeah. fucking where you yeah. go. Oh, yeah. what plug, what, what's that place we were at? Just a little small spot that used uh, to be. Up on Dundas? No. No, uh, eat, not uh, oh, uh, Wayward. Was it Wayward? Yeah, it was Wayward on, on Queen Dover Court. Yeah. 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 So we're up, and it's DJ a small spot. Every time yeah. somebody. Tech 12, sick. Yeah, yeah. got a bottle. Yeah. They're running them out. I was just like. Yeah. Oh yeah, man! What the fuck? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. they were had everything for like seventy-five dollar oh, yeah. bottles or hundred dollar bottles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. not just in those guys. Yeah. That's why I don't yeah. remember the price. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. It's probably a little oh, more yeah. than that. Yeah, yeah. one twenty-five, oh, I'd say. Oh yeah, Up. oh yeah. Reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm. Yeah. That kind of. Yeah. It's, a, it's on Queen Street. Street. So. It's on Queen Street. Yeah, so. yeah. The hipsters. Yeah. Well, not even hipsters. Not yeah. even. No, it's the anti hipsters. Yeah, yeah, the anti hipsters. But yeah, those guys started that whole thing. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, like they were doing things like we had CP24 actually come and cover them doing, they, did, they had like a Superman thing where they, they'd like hold people up and fly them in with capes and shit. And CP, <laughs> For the and, entrance? Oh yeah, and yeah, yeah. with the bottles and everything and CP24 uh, yeah, 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 came yeah. in. It's still, I still have it on YouTube, I'll send you guys the link. Yeah. They're like, oh my god, this is called the Superman and they're like reporting yeah. live on it, right? But those places, those places when they come to Toronto and it's a different, that's the other thing, they, they provide you not only with you know, an experience, but also with entertainment and good service. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think those are three things that Toronto really needs to focus on now that we don't have the pleasure of having everyone concentrated in a really small area anymore. So maybe yeah. since we're in the breeze and creativity will come out. Well, that's, that's uh, what it comes down to. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Do you think Toronto yeah. still has a, an identity crisis as far as the nightlife's concerned? I think so. Trying no, to be I, New York, trying to be Miami. I, I, I don't think so And much. Vegas. I think they're yeah. just young. I just think it's just a young scene right yeah, now. Yeah, like, I mean, scene. We're fortunate enough to be in this place, like we're talking about the Thompson, that new spot that um, those guys are opening up, that when you walk into these spots and you look around the whole city and then you go to a restaurant or you're at a restaurant before you go up there and you go to another spot, like these are all high-end spots. Yeah. 
Yeah. To put but money into them. But with oh, yeah. New York, you just go. You know what I mean? And entertainment has always been there because it's been yeah. there and they know it's how to do it. They just go. It's just, it's it's just part DNA. of the mentality. This is what we're going to do. Yeah. And the creatives, we have the creative here to mm-hmm. do it in Toronto. Mm-hmm. And, and, and the, the money is finally think, finding its way into it then? Or yeah, the creativity is finding its way to money? To. Mm-hmm. The, the money's finding its way into it. And so that's where it comes back to a guy like you, right? So they need someone like you to come in and execute for them as well. Or to like buy into or to buy into what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when I used to work with, you know, my marketing company, um, you know, every brand hated working with clubs because they're like, they know at oh, the end of the yeah. night, they're going to come and there's still going to be a, a, a box of their shit at the front covered in booze. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. nothing's going to be given away, like none of that stuff. And uh, just a buy out. Yeah. 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 So because yeah. every club thinks that you should be paying to be associated with them. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and, and coming from the, you know, brand marketing world, that's not the way it works. Like you have to execute, you have yeah. to deliver. So, I mean, thankfully coming into the nightlife world from that world i was able to bring that over with me where i'm like okay if we say we're going to do this then it has to get done you know and a lot of places are really good at doing that nowadays mm-hmm. people are taking mm-hmm. it for granted like they used the to consumers before. like but, the people on oh, the, yeah. the end the end users oh, yeah. benefiting from that oh, yeah, as well absolutely, right absolutely man absolutely and uh, i i think a lot of the people now especially the younger people are really receptive to brands because brands are so closely tied into people's lifestyles yes. that if you're leaving the club and you get up you know a, a swag bag with some shit you probably actually use it you yeah, know yeah. because especially millennials they say millennials are actually brand friendly they just don't want brands to bullshit them you know yeah, mm-hmm. and 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 that's one of the cool things about being in the bar in the bar, in the bar industry is that everyone that's strolling in there has a brand on because everyone is, is about what brand they're wearing these chicks are walking out those giant bags I don't even know what the hell they're called or if they have anything in them, but they're walking around with the long shelf ones. Yeah, long like shelf. you know, holding up around their <laughs> around their forearms, like they're the cats, right? Or dog. Yeah, they have something in there. So, yeah, so as uh, uh, brands are seeing that kind of stuff, and don't get me wrong, it, you know, it's still at the end of the day, it's still nightlife, it's still clubs, it still has a stigma to it, and that's one thing you always have to fight against. Um, some of it, some of it's been earned, you know, I'm not going to lie. As an industry, some of it's been earned, but there are a lot of people that are paying attention and really doing some really good work, you know, to make brands happy and you're seeing better integrations now like with um digital dreams that um i think it was bud light yeah their yeah. sponsor and they yeah. had like the the digital dreams bud light cans yeah, they put yeah, a little, uh, shrink wrap on yeah that's kind of cool yeah like you know yeah, yeah. yeah like th- those kinds of things are pretty cool man to see that kind of stuff happening years ago i never thought it would happen just because logistically to make it happen you just be like well the cost is, it's, it's got to be on the brand side oh absolutely and they got to be able to kick cash uh, absolutely they, the brand, they, absolutely. Wanted to be that they only wanted it to be uh, one yeah. or the other right uh, yeah yeah that's the other thing too sometimes the brands don't want you to be that creative like you can come with the creative yeah yeah just just uh Oh man! Let's just get the, the yeah, rubber yeah. bands. Well, Let them give them yeah. rubber bands. Well, I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's a risk. That's yeah. a risk. Oh, absolutely. That's what happened uh, a few years ago. I did the um, the Xbox One <laughs> launch. <laughs> I did the Xbox One launch in uh, Toronto right when they launched Windows 8, and when they were just um, launching Xbox One, it hadn't even hit the public yet. There were only six Xbox One consoles in Canada at the time, and I had four of them for this event I was doing for them, and I pitched this whole big elaborate thing like the technology in xbox one at the time was crazy like yeah, yeah you know it, it could read your heartbeat just from the, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the faint under your skin and i came in with that's like, the one with the camera that yeah you, right? yeah yeah and i came in with this whole setup of how we could take the, an entire wall when people are walking and and they were looking at me like i was insane <laughs> and they're like why don't we just do this party? <laughs> and why don't you get some catering? And I'm like, oh, no, nah, man. But, you know, it would be really yeah. cool if when people are, you know, you have the surface wall full yeah, of that's surfaces. What, that's and, what they do in New York. Yeah. yeah. You, met, you met Tom Ford's party a couple years back? No, no. That party was like, that's the pinnacle of what yeah. Toronto should be. Because yeah. when Tom Ford came into that party, it's one of the only, one of the only parties that went to that film festival year. Yeah. Everything was branded Tom Ford. Yeah. Like that black and white. Yeah. From the time that you walked in, the, the knives, the forks, the plates. Yeah. Uh, the way everybody was dressed. Yeah. The uh, the walkway was black. So yep. having it red. The, the, everything was Tom Ford yeah. done. The drapes. Yep. Everything. The lighting yep. was all fixed Tom Ford. I'm like, I love it. This is That's the way exactly. that you do it. Because when I remember that party, yeah, I went to a couple of parties that year. Brand right? execution. Yeah. Yeah. So brand execution was insane. He right. said, I'm only going to do this if you guys. Like I'll yep. put the money down, but you have to do it my way. Oh, absolutely. I don't care if you're gonna knock down walls yeah, or have you, but yep. the details. And I remember absolutely. that party. I went to about maybe four or five of that's yeah. one. I, even this one here. Yeah. I don't remember this one here. I remember it here. Yeah. You know what I mean? But <laughs> yeah. like I don't remember remember yeah, what, you know yeah, what I mean. I remember did. having a couple yeah. of drinks and walking in. So where's here for those of the people that are? We're at the here. spoke club right now. This <laughs> is the, so this we're right now we're at the spoke club. This is our spot where we do the podcast, this is where we do the city. 
uh, every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or every day, we're, uh, whenever we're doing it, we're doing it here at the at the uh, at the uh, spoke club. at the spoke club. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, if we move forward, if we move forward uh, mm-hmm. in in thought process, we we got on the topic about bottle service kind yeah. of infiltrating the industry. Yeah. And like you know, you've been there since day one before it was there. Yeah. Uh, when it started coming about, you had the options of getting bottles, and now it being mandatory. Yeah. <laughs> The mandatory aspect kind of rubs a lot of people the wrong way that are in that age group of say like thirty five and up that will yeah. spend seven hundred bucks. A yeah, I don't care. Like yeah. you know what I mean. Yep. Our first round is one hundred fifty yep. bucks. Yep. You know yep. what I mean. On just yep. doubles. You yep. know what I mean. Yep. Absolutely. But don't necessarily want to drink like yep. vodka. Yeah. On that long. Maybe want a bottle of wine. Maybe want some scotch. Absolutely. You know what I mean. Absolutely. Uh, I think the whole thing with bottle service, especially in the industry, it, it kind of went in waves. Initially, it followed. You know. Yeah, everyone being flush with cash from Bay Street and, and the big mm. expense accounts and all that shit. That also ties in with why Thursdays used to be the big yeah, days, yeah. right? Then 2008 happened. You know, fucking market crashed. Every expense expenses budgets got cut. Right. Uh, yeah, you know. Um, wait. Oh yeah. Then it went into smaller venues where everyone thought, okay, you know, bottle service will still be the thing, so everyone has to do it. And then it went, okay, the, no one's buying these bottles. So remember at one point, Fire Toronto sale. went, yeah, $100 Fire bottles. Sale. Every fucking venue was doing $100 Which bottles. Which was kind of like... It, the- listen, it, it, to <laughs> me, I, I, I wrote about it once and you know, I was hoping that people didn't take it the wrong way because I'm not a guy that I go out, I want bottle service. I'll go out and I'll spend three, 400 bucks at the bar. Yeah. You know, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll buy rounds of shots, you know, nurse a beer a couple of times, you know, <laughs> just fucking just go at it. And I'll spend three, 400 bucks at the end of the night. I don't want to drink vodka all night. You mm-hmm. know, to me, I don't even mm-hmm. personally like vodka. I might get a bottle of champagne depending well, on You're almost selling it to, yeah. to whoever. Hey, hey, let's yeah. go. You want some vodka? Well, no, I'm yeah. drinking yeah. rum, dude. Yeah. yeah. Why don't exactly. you just buy me a rum? Exactly. Oh, I got a bottle of vodka. Got a bottle of vodka. Exactly. Want some champagne? Dude, right. why do I want champagne? Right. Yeah. So, so what happened then is you had this whole fucking fire sale of bottle service in Toronto. It was $100 bottles. And, you know, like I was saying, I wrote about it and I was like, you know, I'm not a guy that does bottle service. I'll spend the money at the bar. Um, I don't want to have to feel like when I'm going there, that's what I have to do. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it, again, your segregate, tastes are different. Well, yeah, 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 and, and, and then it also cheapens like the experience because yeah, you'd have like you know, and then what you what, what what you ended up have, having was you'd have all these tables showing up with a group of like twelve dudes, yeah. and they're spending three hundred bucks on three three bottles, and, and they're going like, where are all the chicks, bro? Yeah, yeah, and it's just there's the wrong crowd. And I said, you know what? I like I like fancy cars. I love Maseratis. I can't afford one. I don't fucking walk into one into a Maserati dealership and being like, hey, you know, you can I get one of those for ten grand? <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah. bottle service is supposed to be a luxury experience, sure, you know. Sure. And now, actually, what you've seen is it's, it's gone back to that now. Well, well, now it's gone back to that where the bottles are reasonably priced, but you're, you're not finding hundred dollar bottles unless it's then you know you're like really down market. Before yeah. you can walk down King Street and find hundred dollar bottles just because people are trying to sell them, but now it's gone back to where places are limiting the amount of tables that they have and selling them for what it's supposed to be. And so it also shows you what a hot there. club is too or a hot oh, absolutely. places because absolutely. that's that's the first to get booked up. Oh yeah, absolutely. That, that, that but then that's when you know when you when you your usually when you're doing service, job, right? yeah, yeah, usually when you have your bottle service sold out, you know you're going to have a really busy night, you yeah. know? So it, it, that's just one of the ways that it, it kind of affected the industry and it go, and it's going in a cycle and what it also did was it fucked up the social dynamics of the, of the yeah. club because, mm-hmm. you know, those guys that are standing at the bar who didn't come in and buy and you know buy bottle service and shit, they can't talk to the girls, you know, whether they're being paid to be there or not to come and fucking hang out because they're all in the booths, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So that's one thing that kind of fucked up the dynamic of the club scene as well. Like bottle service killed the dance floor, you know what I mean? Exactly. Everyone's yeah. everyone's kind of standing around there. The hot girls are standing there. No one's at the bar buying each other shots, socializing, socializing talking, yeah. interacting. Yeah. But now since we're coming full circle, the hottest places in the city are all built around that. You know, whether you're talking about the board game cafes, whether you're talking about places like you know the Addisons and you know the giant games or apartment 200 over in Queen West. Yeah, yeah. All those places are built around people socializing and playing games yeah. and interacting yeah. again. You yeah, know, yeah. so things have kind of come full circle. Bottle service is still there, but even in New York, there are some of the new clubs that are opening have limited bottle service space because mm. you know just the economics of it have changed. You know, yeah, and people yeah. are going back to paying their their cover to come in mm. and spending their money at the bar. So whereas before the cover was almost. Yeah, uh, it, 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 whatever. These guys are buying yeah. bottles 
cool. You know what I mean? You, they shot, it's almost like yeah. they shot themselves in the foot. Oh, it's absolutely. Experience. Absolutely. I, absolutely. I wanted yeah. to ask you about weed because we've, we've noticed just yeah, over absolutely. the years what the hell. Oh, absolutely. But I mean, even in, when I when I was working for the, when I got hired by the Thompson Hotel here in Toronto, I was actually hired by their New York office. And the people from New York flew up here to meet with me and interview me. And one of the things was they were like, okay, they don't want bottle service in the lobby of the Thompson because in New York, it's our, it's over. This is in 2013. This is three years ago. Yeah. They're mm -hmm. like, people think it looks fucking douchey. You walk in here, For people sure. standing with bottles and spark. They didn't want any of that shit. You know what I mean? And as the hotel, especially the group that was, that owned the Thompson, they're, they're, they have you know their, their hotels and clubs in Miami and Vegas and all over. So they know what the fuck's going on. Yeah. And they were like, they would prefer, like if people want to sit, just let them sit. If they want it, fine, but don't push it. They don't want that look in there. You know, mm. at that time, you said that in Toronto, people are looking at you like, what are you, crazy, bro? This yeah. is fucking three grand, bro. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But they know what people's it's tastes down are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what people's tastes are. They know what the look is. And there are people that like, like that. You walk in and some people look and they see bottle service. They're like, this is place a fucking douche factory. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And they'll want to go someplace else where, you know, they have a different type of manufactured coolness. So mm. it's kind of yeah. like the upscale pubs are happening now. Oh, yeah, man, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, fucking Cactus Club killing it oh, the yes. citizens killing it um early mercy which is kind of uh citizens doing well oh yeah man citizens doing really well dude you go there on a saturday doing 1200 people like yeah dude um breathe heavy on that one <laughs> 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 like, you know and uh, but that's the thing people are looking for a hassle-free experience where they can actually have a good time again you know and mm. and and as a nightclub you know the way I would I would deal with that is all right. That means we got to focus again on you know service and hospitality. You know what I mean? So, Having people at your door that know how to speak to people. So mm -hmm. it kind of comes back to it now with uh, as I was mm -hmm. pointing out earlier, the government closed down. Yep. Yeah. What just over a year ago? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now with it relaunching yeah. under a different name. Yeah. This is everybody think entertainment behind yeah. it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, they've turned Sound Academy upside down. Oh yeah. Which is Tasha Cabana for those that don't oh, know. Yeah. Oh yeah. And. Oh, new yeah. name, new name coming out, everything launching, oh, yeah. new sound system. Oh, yeah. It's going to be the biggest club in town. Oh yeah, man, uh, by far. Uh, yeah. So, with the the gap and everybody getting into a, like you know mm -hmm. a habit of going to these smaller satellite yep. environments. Yeah. Now this is purely a destination spot. Yep. Yep. What do you think these got up to sleep? Because uh, you know a lot of people are excited about it, but at the same time they're a bit confused, right? Yeah, I mean, it, 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 I think I think he's looking, and without exaggerating, he's going to have days where he's doing 10,000 people between Cabana and yeah. that space easily between Cabana and that space. You think space. Toronto is just it's, is it, Charles dying Cabooth, for something to have. Char Charles Cabooth is a force of nature, man. Yeah. Oh, for sure. He, he, I wasn't questioning he, that no, part. No, no, kind yeah, of what yeah, I was yeah, saying yeah. is like as, as a as an industry, it's one. Yeah, thing. yeah. But as far as like the the vibe of what's happening in Toronto yeah, right now, yeah, you kind of got everybody's going into a well, slumber. Who I would now you got to wake yeah. them up again. Oh right? yeah, who, who who I would worry about? Like I think they're going to do just fine, just because at the end of the day, he has the power to be like, all right, fuck it, let me just put Dead Mouse in here this week. You know what I yeah, mean? Let me yeah. put yeah, you know, Angelo in here this week. Let me mm. put, and he will do it. Like when we mm. launched Union, well, that's yeah, kind of how the government got started. Oh yeah, dude. Mm. Oh yeah, even when we launched We're Union, all part of that one. Yeah. When we launched Union, I um, I was doing the Saturdays and the Friday nights at Union were the DJ nights, yeah. and it, it, they came out with Eric Murillo, and then the week after that they had um, the Martinez brothers. yeah the Martinez brothers and yeah, they just they set after, the bar. Was, this oh is my god, like, you're into this music? This is yeah, where you go. yeah, yeah, and it's and classic, and, yeah, practice. yeah, and the thing is with that crowd, they follow the DJs. You yeah, know what 100%. I mean? So. You're you're not gonna be like, all right, cool. I went to go see, um, you know, Kenny Dope this week, so I'm gonna chill and not go see Axwell next week. You're gonna be like, oh fuck. Well, I guess I'm not going anywhere in between. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's true. And people, I guess I so, want to eat. Yeah. So I mean, with the space of that size, and with, you know, with Cabana, and then with, with what he's doing at Sound Academy, it, I think it is going to be split up into some smaller vent parts, apparently. Like you go, he's gonna have like a VIP type club, like how he used to have gold room upstairs. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's gonna have that. Well, they had the glass but, room. Before, yeah, right? yeah. It was all and, Benson and Hedges money, I think. Up, that oh yeah, oh yeah. Those, that, that money's still around somewhere. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, they have, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, and and if if I so I think they're gonna be fine. I would worry more with the mid, the mid to medium sized guys who got comfortable with their crowd not competing with the government on a Friday and a Saturday. There you go. Those so are the what, people like I'd worry about. 
I'm not naming any sort of names. Oh, <laughs> oh no, yeah, actually, yeah, I was just saying. Yeah. Not, but you, you're I, actually, it. I don't yeah. think that would yeah. be a problem no, for no, those guys. Yeah, it's, it's a different, different market. market. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I meant the size. Yeah. The yes. Size. Yeah. yeah. So who do you who do you think like mm-hmm. any any well, anyone that's pushing between 400 to 600 could be drains. Yeah. Basically. 400 yeah. to 600. Like what? Yeah. Like, I, I don't want to name so names. Like, okay, so, so his, com- his competition. competition yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah well, I, I, I think any, further, any further place, east of the, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, to me, smaller venues are going to be fine. The the, the medium sized ones that 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 would compete with whatever you know if they're doing the house music thing on particular nights like Friday on a sa- Saturday everyone's going to make their money mm. Friday night that's what I'm talking about you know what I mean what you have to say Friday you got a good solid Friday yeah. Saturday any other nights you just, just good bang gravy. Yeah. It's gravy. Bang. you know yeah. but in the city you'll really it's really hard you'd be really hard pressed to find anywhere with you know even three or four really solid nights right now consistently it's not like how it was before mm. because everything is so spread and because you know the, those suits that would come and do bottle service on your Thursday night are really out Thursday from five to 10 now. And, you know, calling it a night, especially with like cactus club opening, right? Mm. Like everyone goes to cactus yeah. club or Casamoto up on the roof. Yeah. Those places are, those places are going West to be West Coast fun. boys came here and yeah. owned it. Oh yeah, absolutely. But they mm. came with a strong brand, right? It's like, very strong. Yeah. Every, everyone knew about it coming in. So, it, you know, worked really well for them. Same thing with Joey's and shit. They, they come yeah. in with a brand and a formula and just it's good. knock it all out. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. with the summer here, yep. usually clubs in Toronto dry up pretty heavily in the summer, except yeah. for special events. Yeah. Yeah. But now you've got all these mid-size. Yep. So I mean mid, Medium. I mean smaller. Yeah. Medium. Yeah. Yeah. So these places now seem to be, do- it seems more livelier than ever. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Man. That's actually words yeah. that go together. <laughs> yeah. How about livelier than Yeah, ever. livelier than ever. More livelier. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah more, I mean, it's more good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The city comes alive during summertime. I think part of that is too with all, with all the condos coming in, you're having a lot more people between 25 and 40. Too to travel. <laughs> yeah, you know, legit. You know, yeah, that's what I mean. So they're, local. They're from, they're from <laughs> yeah. the burbs and everywhere else. Now the they're burbs, downtown. We're here. Downtown. Let's do this up. Yeah, like here. Those condos used to be ghost town in the summer. Oh yeah, yeah, no, oh yeah, no way, man. Those, those condos weren't here eight years ago, yeah. 2007, 2008. Insane, they weren't actually. there. Yeah, those people who are living down here now are the people that used to travel down. So all the local places are killing it. You know, mm-hmm. Williams Landing, Hunters Landing, oh, all those places. Oh, stop. Local um, yeah. over in um, Liberty Village is killing it. Local like, is yeah. killing it. Yeah, yeah. 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 like yeah. All, all these different, all these different places are killing it, and they're dealing off of you know the local crowd. Like, and those guys are all brands that have spun off from working for the bigger companies. They oh yeah, just absolutely. started their own thing. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, you learn a lot working with those companies, right? Those big box companies. You, you learn processes, and procedures, and systems, and so with that you know, said, what about you in mm-hmm. another club? Oh, I'm looking to open a bar, man. Yeah, yeah. I've got See, a, I've got a concept. Reason. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I've got a concept. Uh, You've been saying, talking about yeah. this already, though. Yeah. So, uh, base wise, what do you say? Yeah. Um, no more than no more than two fifty. Yeah, yeah two hundred, two fifty, absolute guys tops. Like, guys' apartment, two hundred. They yeah. lucked out in that venue. Yeah, yeah, yeah they did. Yeah. Those uh, are Montreal yeah, boys too, are they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. they lucked out large. That's spot there. But that, yeah, they're just on strong weekdays. Yeah. Yeah. So something along yeah. that line is yeah. It, 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 it's size definitely wise. gonna have yeah. Size wise, two hundred, two fifty max, like max, 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 depending on how much of a dance floor I want to have. But <clears throat> I want to have a food element, strong. You know, this is a really dope bar bar spot where I'd want to go out and hang, and my buddies want to hang, and mm-hmm. you know, places for girls to chill and shit, but like dope music and no bullshit. You know what I mean? And they're gonna get great crazy. hospitality. Kenny brings. Oh uh, uh, yeah, man. You know, everyone it's, by it's name. About, yeah, legit. I mean, that's what it's all about, right? And it's funny like i still see a lot of my old staff from roosevelt room and yeah, yeah. Right, they're, they're still like you know you know grinding away in the industry and they're still like man when are you going to do something and uh, i think that's that's you know now there's leaders in the industry you know? yeah yeah right, so I if mean, you get that by it's like supreme team <laughs> yeah. come back and make it happen <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah that's that's my thing i'm just looking for the right the, the right spot right now some of me and my investors are butting heads in terms of the location like i think college street's going to be the next like it's really gotta be it, it's gotta be the uh, next yeah, good yeah. explosion yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah man like in kensington market there yeah. uh, you know walmart wanting to move into an area both bad and good it's good in that you know that you know they they've done their research money, yeah they've there's done, money mm-hmm. to be made there mm-hmm. so and i mean like i said there's two massive condo developments opening right at college in spadina there's another massive one opening up well, at closer spadina to the area as well yeah along that area. oh yeah all along all along dundas all well i everything think yeah pushing west. i think the dupont mm-hmm. strip too is gonna have a big, big time because s- it's so cheap, it's so cheap. well yeah. they're starting it mm-hmm. 
they are starting yeah, yeah. at the Duff, DuPont and Dufferin yeah. area. Yeah. And spreading out east. east right? Right? Or they're going west. Yeah, yeah. 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 So you know some yeah. boys yeah. in the, the construction industry, and they're yeah. talking like plans have been, are out. There's oh, yeah. a lot of work coming through the unions oh, down yeah. that route. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, there you go. And um, up around Young and, Eg- Young and Eglinton as well, up around there is going to be. But that's one particular group who's looking at developing out like three square blocks around there. You know what that's I mean? Insane. So, but really and truly, and that's, everything's moving a bit more no, mid north. So, like Dundas, um, old Toronto area, and mm-hmm. that's all getting rebuilt. So, those are all the places where a lot of things are going. But as far as like being close to downtown, like, you know, King West and shit, I really think off college there's going to be, you know, the next hotspot. There's just too much, there's too many people going in the area for it not to be. Are you yeah, living so. in that? Like you Yeah, man, I okay. do. That's why yeah. I know there's a fucking condo being built 20 feet away from my window. It's oh, you're going to hear it for a year. It's oh, awesome. Dude. <laughs> you know what's even better? Oh, how everything man. gets dusty. Oh, man. And then you I'm clean it. All of that right now. I'm going through all of that right now. It, it, it opens up. Uh, all your black spring clothes in the closet, man. Everything, man. I'm telling you. Yeah, it opens up spring of 2017. I can't wait. I'm like, it's going to be flooded with chicks. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I'm in the West End yeah. where Parkdale oh, was. Yeah. yeah. And my <laughs> warehouse got torn, not mine, no, but where yeah, I live yeah, yeah. since 97. No way. Yeah, yeah. on Abel Street. was yeah. torn down. Yeah. And yeah. I was lucky enough to get an artist's yeah. loft. Yeah. Killer, yeah. like yeah. almost 1,300 square yeah. feet. I used to live off Roar in there. Yeah, you know yeah. the area. Yeah. yeah. Point in case is that, like, one goes up yep. and then four more go four up. More and the next thing up. you know, you can't walk your dog without nope. running across a beautiful woman. Oh, yeah, man. Beautiful woman. Yeah. Going to the gym, there's like oh, six yeah. beautiful women on the way. Oh so, yeah, man, Jesus. absolutely. Yeah. So I mean, I think, and there, I think there's like a, there's even like a brewery or something that's opening in Kensington, and it looks like it might have a rooftop patio. I'm not sure. The scaffolding's going all the way up the building, but yeah. The, the point is, like, the city's being spread out. There's a lot of different things that are happening, a lot, and a lot of different places that are being developed throughout the city, and a lot of different scenes that are popping that are going to be popping up around them to support them. So that's always really so it's, exciting. It's an exciting good, time. Yeah, it's to be time living in Toronto. Yeah, more yeah, importantly, absolutely. it's a very exciting time for someone who's had roots in Toronto. Yeah, and coming of age <laughs> yep. in the industry. Yeah, right? absolutely, absolutely, man. It's um, it's it's what a time to be alive. <laughs> you know, yeah. Toronto's definitely making its mark culturally. Um, on the world stage, uh, a lot of us who are in the city may not actually realize it, but you know, you step out, you come yeah. back. You oh yeah. Know. Well, I mean, fuck. It, with me, it's just I don't travel a lot. I'm definitely trying to change that, but I do talk to so many people that come into Toronto, mm. and the things they have to say, it's completely different. Yeah. And then my yeah. friends that do travel, like you know, you probably heard you can tell yeah. people you're from Toronto now. They're like, oh my god, you know. Yeah, yeah. Toronto's cool. You know, Drake? Yeah. <laughs> of course they do. What, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, really? Let's <laughs> text them. Let me just text them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Champagne poppy. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, hold on. I'm just texting yeah. Dead Mouse. When I'm done texting yeah. Dead Mouse, yeah. I'll text Drake for yeah. you. Yeah. 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 And so, I mean, culturally, we're really getting there. And I think that's causing people to take a lot more pride pride in toronto mm. and and now you're actually going to see the toronto culture pop out whatever that may be like one of the big things that used to turn me off is you know and especially in the urban scene like everyone i talk to had a fake american accent i'm like yeah. more yeah. british yeah, yeah 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 and i'll be like fuck man like i used to live in the bronx and i don't sound like that dude yeah. like yeah. east 220th white plains and i don't sound like you why do you sound like that like yeah. these are drive me crazy yeah. and it's because everyone you know wanted to front like they're this not cooler. from toronto yeah. Yeah. yeah but now being from toronto is cool you language. know yeah like even you know in some of the gossip blogs in the states like you know they're using like different toronto slang and little things like in joking yeah. ways still yeah. it's, it's still that still you know, no poke, right? yeah it's still but, happening yeah. regardless oh yeah and no, just like, like they say you know, no there's no such thing as bad press right? no not yeah. at all man and so to me that just shows how relevant toronto is becoming as a city and as a destination internationally there's a lot more development coming into the city there's a massive 60 acre development that's happening down at the, the uh waterfront. at the waterfront down yeah. there and yeah yeah, 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 and and they're actually trying to build it. So like, it's going to be the second entertainment, uh, not entertainment district, sorry, financial district. But unlike you know the financial like district, that's ghost town. Yeah, mm-hmm. like it's ghost town after um you know after say seven or eight o'clock. They want it to keep going, so they want nightlife there, and they're consulting Pop with different people. Oh yeah, yeah, they're, yeah, they're consulting. 
Yeah, they want it. Restaurant. Yeah, they want it to be living all the time. They don't want it to just be like you know all the suits dip and get the fuck out. And you know they're going to have um I think they said like three go hub uh, go train hubs built built there. They're like we don't want Whoa. it to empty out. Yeah, they go, they go we don't want it to empty out. So we want it to keep, yeah, 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 keep it out so downtown. It. Push it there. Yeah. And just have a- yeah, so they want, you know, restaurants and nightlife and shit. And I'm like, you want this? That's such a departure from what, you know. The city's been preaching for yeah. such a PC yeah. city for so long. Yeah, Toronto the good man. Now, now it's like, you know, completely politically yeah. correct at yeah. one point where yep. you couldn't do anything. Yeah, yep. mm-hmm. yeah. So now people are, you know, now things are loosening up. And that comes to the member we were just talking mm-hmm. earlier about the uh, nightlife mayor. Yeah. Wasn't there some yeah. rumblings at one point? Yes. Yeah, uh, I can't remember who was talking about it. One of the counselors, yeah. but wanting to be the nightlife mayor of Toronto. Yeah, the, it was a yeah. modeled on what, what someone was doing in the, was Amst- it London uh, Am- or Amsterdam? Amsterdam. Yeah. Yeah. London, or Amsterdam, I think, because London's nightlife is dry. Here on the city yeah. podcast, yeah. we don't fact check. No, we no. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck your facts. <laughs> Thanks, Rap. <laughs> make yeah. <laughs> make Toronto great again. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, the, the, the night mayor. It's actually something that I wrote about is once, and that's basically somebody who works within the city who has influence and advocates for nightlife, and someone who understands the industry. And I mean, the, the ups and downs. Yeah, as well, yeah. yeah. And, and and to me, the um, you know, the, the best example I could give, and it's something that affects everyone one way or another, is the smoking bylaw. Yeah. Like um, we went from you know not being able to smoke inside, which is cool and understandable. Mm-hmm. I actually welcomed mm-hmm. it. One hundred percent. And I smoked. Yeah. Sorry. And I, I actually welcomed that. Sorry. Um, to you're only able to smoke on patios. To you can't smoke on patios if it's covered. So if you had awnings yeah. and shit, you have to roll them back. So it couldn't be uh, yeah. heaters then. Yeah, either. yeah. So it couldn't be heaters. And now you're not even allowed to smoke out on patios. Now, in one sense, you might be like, okay, I kind of get it. You push everyone out onto the sidewalks and and off onto the street or whatever. But then when you look at a venue like Cabana, which is basically a giant patio of two thousand people and it's open air and it's right next to the sea and you're not allowed to smoke there. No, I'm smoking in Cabana. Yeah, you can't smoke in Cabana. And and you'd have to think that even, or even at the Thompson up on the roof, you sure, know, up, yeah. up on the pool, you can't smoke there. And these are open air venues. So at a certain point, you'd think if the industry was more tuned in, more organized, we would have, you know, had people or a night mayor who would have went and yeah. said, well, that's... On our behalf. Yeah. That's Give really, us a break. Yeah, that's Maybe really Maybe the dumb. population is only 5% of the community. <laughs> yeah. yeah, something. But, the size of a yeah. shower and everyone's curled into yeah, it. Yeah, like you, you have to have someone on a city level that's there to advocate for the industry. And that's theoretically what the nightmare would, 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 would serve. Like there are venues that are being shut down because of nuisance, noise complaints. And they're a very real thing. And, you know, it's not all the time yeah. they make the news. Um, Even in moratoriums a, as well. Yeah, the, the when an area just gets bumping, areas, yeah, and they shut them down. They shut it down. Yeah, and choke it, it out. Basically. Yeah, exactly. And you know, there was um, a really popular microbrewery. Um, I think in Liberty Village or just on the on the outskirt of Liberty Village, and they literally only had seating for sixteen people. And in the summertime, they'd roll up their garage window. I mean, their their garage door. And there was a neighbor who was like on the other side of the alleyway who complained, and they were almost shut down. And this is a business that the entire neighborhood loved because they're like, oh, well, now they're they're trying to turn it into a club. And you're like, well, there's only seating for like 16 people. And the only reason you're hearing a noise is because you rolled up the garage door in the middle of the summer. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it wasn't a lot of noise because this is all during the day. But there's no recourse for nuisance noise complaints. The city has to, you know, follow up on them. I know plenty of patios that have been shut down or businesses that they they intend to make their money on their patios. And they've been shut down Mm. because of nuisance noise complaints. Now, Mm. if you had a nightmare, they would go in and say, okay, well, we need to challenge and change these laws. So we allow for reasonable, you know, reasonable levels of noise, you know. So that's where a nightmare would come in handy. Uh, Would we ever get there? I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, doesn't that constitute somebody lobbying? Like, you get a lobby behind you? Yeah. Like, you know, which, talking about yeah, politics, right? Like, yeah. Now you're sitting in, in daytime morning meetings with people that are making the rules and regulations oh, yeah, on the city and the absolutely. building, the engineering and all that kind of stuff, what's going to go down. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, <laughs> honestly, a lot of the times, if you've ever you know, gone out to City Hall and seen how they do things, it's whoever's just there and screams the loudest or, or has a particular councillor's ear or, or the mayor's ear, you know? Um, 
I always joked about it. I was like, you know, the one thing I miss about Rob Ford is some of the stuff that's been passed ever since he's been out wouldn't have been passed because the guy liked to party. <laughs> you know, rest yeah. in peace, Rob Ford, you know? Sure. He was out and he also got it. He knew a lot of the owners and he knew that they were small business people and he knew what's going on and he didn't want to break anyone's balls. Like, he got it. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And you need that because we are small business owners. Like, mm-hmm. when um, I had my club, the Roosevelt Room, I employed, I think, up to 70 something people. One of my uh, employees was like a, a, a Persian immigrant kid and he's a great kid, barely spoke English. So being a sur- being a bar back was the only job he could have. He was mm-hmm. learning English and he was taking care of his mom with all the money he made working for me. Yeah. Um, we closed because the building got sold to, yeah, become, a, to become a condo. Know, yeah. um, but this kid was now out of work and he was like, who's going to take care of my mom now? You know, um, when I went over to the, um, uh, there was a, I can't remember, there's a restaurant where people would go after work to go, I mean, after after the club to go eat. And the guy was like, he didn't realize just how much business that all the clubs around were sending to him because now they're not there anymore. So now he sees it and their business is closed down. So it's having like it's big inertia. Oh, yeah. So ha- staff. Oh, yeah. Staff. The sta- the staff, right yeah. Staff go, 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 and having a nightmare or somebody in there. You know, when you had, you know, um, the counselor like Adam Vaughn, who's in there, you know, trying to make it out to be the worst thing next to like selling drugs and selling booze, you would have somebody in there who's saying, well, let's stop for a minute. These are people that are paying. Like, I know my, my, one of my last GST fucking bills for um, my club was $37,000. I had to pay the government. And that was for a quarter. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I'm paying my fucking taxes. I'm a legitimate business. But then you have people that are making it seem like we're not legitimate businesses. And if you have a nightmare in there, they'll remind those people in there that these are real people with real businesses that are yeah. paying real money and doing real good. You know, and mm. we can't just treat them like, you know, we're, we're common criminals because we're not, you know, yeah, yeah. we're legitimate businessmen, well, small businessmen. You're making the neighborhood, you're oh, absolutely. Right going to the up, city. the It always gets. happens, it always happens, yeah. with, you know, you need like clubs and city, stuff. Man. Oh yeah, the clubs and stuff, move in because it's cheap rent, they bring all this life and everyone and says, oh my God, spot. yeah, it's a hot area, I want to live there and I'm going to buy that building and put a condo there and then you start complaining about the noise, <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah, push everything yeah. out. It's happening on, uh, in Queen West now, or West Queen yeah. West, people are complaining about that. So, I mean, you know, it's kind of the cycle that happens all over the world. But if we had a nightmare, to me, that would be really dope, you know? Yeah. So I mean, it, it would serve a purpose on many levels. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So is this something Just, maybe you consider doing? Of course I fucking do it, man. I'd love to. <laughs> <laughs> My two loves. <laughs> Politics and nightlife, man. Absolutely. Yeah. I would yeah. crush it. Uh, I, I would crush it, man. Um, you know, I am politically involved as it is anyways. And, um, you know... We, as an industry, in order to improve and grow up, we do need to get more involved at a city level because decisions are being made without us that yeah. affect us. And we kind of just roll with it and be like, oh, okay, that's what it is. But that's not the way to do business. And if we want the industry to grow and to thrive and to really be world class, we absolutely have and to. And that kind of answers yeah. my last question I had was, what's next? Um, and when I say what's next, I mean, yeah. what's next for you? Which yeah. sounds like it's a nightmare. What do you think, Chad? Yeah. <laughs> <That's exactly laughs> no. um, <laughs> you could be your director yeah, of marketing. Uh, yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. But I know um, my, my next short-term focus is um, my new bar. Ah, yeah, so next. finally it comes yeah, out. Yeah, so yeah, our tactic yeah, work. Yeah, Good work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Done it. <laughs> took a couple minutes to get it out, but we got it out. Yeah. You know I mean? so it took yeah. an hour. The long yeah. way around. Yeah, absolutely. It's been an hour already, yeah? Yeah. Okay, we got to wrap this thing up. We gotta wrap this thing up, man. This is the City Podcast here. Steve Millen. Chad Grant. That's me. Kenny Bryan, thank you very much yep. for coming out to the show thank you for uh, tonight. You know, hey, come back. Come back. Come back. There's lots come back. We got more of what we need to ask. You can tell everybody yeah. what you're really all about. Yeah. 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 Down. Politics no, no, awesome, man. Oh yeah, man. The politics yep. never goes away. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah, they're telling me. All right, I gotta All go. Right. I got something I gotta take care of. Uh, I know. Uh, this is a city podcast, and we are home. Peace. Uh,